Good morning and welcome back to More Than Cars. Fire the old uh, AMR up. Really, really am enjoying this. I really do think these Aston Vantages are fabulous, fabulous cars actually. I really do think for a modern, and I, I, I re, really need to reiterate that, a modern kind of supercar, sports car, they are fun, engaging, and really, really enjoyable to drive. And um, actually, that brings me on to the topic of discussion today, the new Aston Martin Vantage convertible. So I haven't driven one yet. Not that I need to, I mean, it's just a convertible version of this. Well, the non-AMR version is anyway, but, oh, I didn't press sports or the AMR shift button. Well, it does dramatically actually help you and it really does make it feel a lot, lot smoother. But yeah, the, um, the convertible, what do we think to the Aston Martin convertible? Well, I imagine, actually, it's going to be a bloody good car. And I say that because A, I really, 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 and I cannot stress that enough like the way these things drive and i've said it every time every time every morning i say it's fun it's engaging but i really need to get that across this car is fun and engaging and they've done it in such a manner that makes it feel still like a driver's car what for a modern car i really do feel is a it's genius actually to get a modern car to feel this way if you jump into any new mercedes bmw audi anything new with an automatic gearbox they feel the same they genuinely feel the same they, they don't really feel connected to the road they don't feel engaging in essence they've still got too much power for what they are it does feel an engaging drive whereas aston have really engineered something that isn't really that fast to be a fun car i can't say it any other way but it is this is a very fun car and i do like the v8 sound i know everybody's saying well it's an amg mercedes engine and all of that at the end of the day i don't really care i'm still in aston martin everybody who looks at it knows it's an aston martin i like the aesthetics i like the look of the enlarged badges i think they've modernized aston enough whilst retaining the kind of the, the actual styling hints of what an Aston Martin Vantage should be. And as a result, I think it's a very, very good combination. Now I've been watching, is it Harry's Garage or the, the, old, the old chap um, who um, does this, <laughs> whatever this, this is, talks about cars. And he actually, obviously Aston Martin had lent him one and he'd uh, driven the new Vantage and he has highlighted the one thing or a couple of things that actually I 100% agree with. I think his review was actually really, really good. So if you want to see the review of the uh, Vantage convertible, please go and watch his. I'll probably put the link in the description below because it was actually genuinely a really good, really good review. He summarized this car pretty much in the same way I've had it in the sense of it is fun, it is engaging, it is it is a good car, genuinely a really good car. I'm a big fan of the standard Vantage, I think the AMR just adds a little bit of flair to it and with the manual gearbox it makes, for me, more exciting to jump into this over, say, the DBS or a Pista or an SV or whatever else I've got at the time. It just adds that little variation to my garage lineup. But, you know, I've had the standard Vantage when it first came out, I raved about it then. I really enjoyed driving that thing as a daily driver. I thought it was brilliant back then. I still think it's brilliant back now. Combining the fact that you've got a roof now that can come off, I believe in seven seconds, I think is the number. Um, you're gonna add to that. The, 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 I, and I know it's engineered. I fully appreciate this noise from the Mercedes engineer engine mounted up front, or it's not really, it's kind of, quite close to me it's very the weight of this car is actually pushed back slightly um, to make the balance uh, slightly more rear bias because I believe the gearbox is in the back as well um, but the point my point being it's a good sound that I know it's engineered and I know the fact that to get it to make a real good 
noise and if you drop the windows you can still hear a v8 barbell even in sports mode the minute you start ticking it up to sports plus or uh, track mode it really does start to pop bang and it can be quite naughty to be honest that's the best way to describe it and i know it's fake i know it's engineered but at the end of the day i actually don't care this thing can be so civilized and so calm and quiet especially with an automatic gearbox and you can drive it every single day gently poodle back and from work with it and then the minute you hit that sports plus button it can start cracking and banging and you get it into track mode it really does pop and bang at every possible occasion i like that i really enjoy that it, it's a car that's i think close enough to like a 911 that it's an all-rounder it can be your daily driver it can be the one that you nip to the shops it's got plenty of boot space or it can be something you take out on a weekend and have an absolute blast potentially even round a track in because it's those modes are the only cars i've really been in that you genuinely feel they're doing something they're not just they're turning esc off or um, you know electronic stability control and that that's another button entirely it's actually adding to the driver's experience it's allowing a little bit more slip it's a, it's changing the mapping of your accelerator pedal it, it does make you feel that those modes are doing something and that adds again to the driver engagement i think aston's worked really hard on the electronics and the bits to make the car feel like it's got split personality what is in my head good because we come to the one downside about the vantage or even the vantage coupe and you know that with that convertible more access to those engine notes it it is going to be a fabulous car that's going to have even more personality by the very fact that you can gently cruise along listening to that fantastic v8 burble and then when you want it to pop and bang you can be even more engaged but we do need to come on to the one downside that I really do feel is holding back the Vantage, and that's its price tag. I said this the minute I got into my one, was it last year or 20, no, 28, was it 2018? Was it 2018 or 2019 when I got the first Vantage? I think it was last year, could have been the year before. Generally can't remember, that's worrying, that shows that I've had far too many vehicles. Anyway, my point being, it is too expensive. I genuinely feel this thing is way, way, way too expensive for what it is. If they drop the price tag by 40 grand, I think A, that would help residuals, B, more people would be interested in it because one of these, a convertible spec, is what, 145, 150,000 pounds? That's a lot of money. That is real, real supercar money. That's second-hand 720S money. I mean, 720S is slightly cheaper than that. That's, what would you rather have? A Vantage convertible or a 2,000 mile, just out, well, just under a year old McLaren 720S? And that's worrying when I'm the one saying, suggesting a McLaren 720S over advantage and i completely appreciate the completely different cars i'm just thinking value for money wise a mclaren is a hell of a lot more car than the vantage i know we've got reliability and everything else and just the uh, you know performance figures of the mclaren it would annihilate it they are com two completely different cars but my point being value for money i don't think the vantage is there it's not the quickest it's not the one that you know is going to win the race it's not the one that's going to win the show at um, a car event i think they priced it wrong i think it genuinely if they lower the price ever so slightly more people would be, like it or feel they can get into it i think is more the, the factor because the minute these get get on the road they depreciate so much like every modern car they dramatically depreciate and therefore People are frightened of losing the money, therefore people are frightened to buy them. And don't get me wrong, in two, three years' time, I think these will be doing really well because the second-hand market will be there for them and people will be buying them second-hand after the first person have dramatically lost, lost on them. It's the only thing that I can think is wrong with the Vantage. Other than that, 
It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And I clearly love it. There you go. What do you think? Do you agree with my summary about the Aston Martin Vantage and the convertible? I would really like to borrow a convertible from Aston Martin, so if you're watching, please let me borrow one. Um, just to see if it changes my perspective of hearing that V8. I mean, I love it in this. I think I would even love it in more in a convertible. I don't think personally a convertible would suit me as a person, but it would be nice to trial one of those cars. And I have always said, I think these things are fabulous. I love the engine. I like the automatic um, you know, gearbox in them. They are a brilliant car. They've got two personalities. I think they are something that should and does rival a 911. I think they're just priced slightly wrong to actually tempt more people into them. I think if they'd lowered the price ever so slightly, they'd get more interest and therefore the residuals would hold a bit better and more people would actually buy them. That's just my personal opinion. Do you agree? What do you think of the Vantage and the Vantage convertible? And also, I completely, the two different stylings at the front, I think you should have stuck with your guns. I prefer the more aggressive one. I appreciate why you hearkened back to the original Vantage slick design, but I actually prefer the new one. Do you prefer the new design or the old, or the new, new design, where it's really the old design, if that's the best way to describe it? Shall we say the big open mouth or the slats? I like the open mouth. I think it looks more aggressive. And for a, I say slightly younger person, I'm getting on, getting on about, getting on now, aren't I? 30, that is definitely not slightly young anymore. But anyway, on that note, thank you very much for watching. I really do hope you're enjoying these daily drives to work. I appreciate they're really not that interesting at the moment, but as soon as we pass the helicopter, as soon as a couple of cars have arrived, we'll be switching it up ever so slightly. And hopefully, even though where I am has gone into, I don't know what, the one below the top is the, probably the easiest way to describe it, COVID lockdown situation, but it's not a good situation to be in. Uh, we're just trying to survive and I'm just trying to produce something slightly entertaining that passes 10 minutes of your day. I really hope you're enjoying it. And if you haven't subscribed to the More Than Cars YouTube channel, please do. We are growing this community all for Project 2 as soon as that kicks off. Well, hopefully will be sooner rather than later. Anyway, on that note, thank you very much for watching. Please do like, get in the comments below if you agree or disagree with what I've said in this video. And I'll see you again tomorrow for another silly video. Bye guys, really do take care.